published 1730 EDT, 25 October 2017 Updated 1730 EDT, 25 October 2017 Hot on the heels of an Anfield stand being named after Kenny Dalglish comes of harrowing film about the Liverpool legend's life. Kenny, which is due to have what will be a hugely emotional premiere in Liverpool on November 15th tells his story mainly through his attachment to his beloved adopted city. And even viewers with no particular affinity for Dalglish or Liverpool will surely be moved by the traumatic account of what he has been through away from his Trafilitan achievements as player and manager. A new film about the life of Kenny Dalglish reveals harrowing details of three tragic incidents Dalglish was manager of Liverpool on the day of the Hillsborough disaster which killed 96 fans The Glaswegian was in the stands at the Ibrox disaster in 1971 which led to 66 deaths, a Liverpool player at the Hazel tragedy in 1985, when 39 lost their lives, and the club manager at Hillsborough in 1989. When there were 96 victims. The celluloid treatment suits Dalglish's craggy, hugely expressive features, lighting up with joy on goal scurring, or family occasions or displaying the full bewildering horror of Hillsborough, when the personal burden he took on helping the bereaved families undoubtedly led to his resignation as manager two years later. The Liverpool legend was honoured with the renaming of a stand at Anfield earlier this month Dalglish did not want to go back to Hillsborough, but producers Pitch International, a sports TV rights company full of Liverpool fans making their outstanding debut as filmmakers, had the great idea of taking Dalglish to a spot in the hills on the approach road to Sheffield. There he could look down on the stadium from afar and contemplate all that has happened in the family's fight for justice. The film is also likely to lead to a clamor for Dalglish to be knighted. Apart from his football honors and campaigning after Hillsborough, he has helped raise pounds eight million for wife Marina's cancer charity. The Arsenal board will have to give some kind of answer on Friday at their annual meeting as to precisely why chief executive Ivan Gazetas was awarded a near one million pound bonus for the season when the team failed to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in 20 years. The question has been tabled by the Arsenal supporters' trust as part of their set of written queries to the board. Sir Chips Keswick, Josh Kroenke and Divan Gazetas face a grilling at Arsenal's M on Thursday The irony of Pep Guardiola complaining about the Carabao Cup ball after his Manchester City side only beat championship team Wolves after a penalty shootout is that many people in football believe Mitter's product to be greatly superior to the Nike or Adidas versions. But the two sports retail giants pay multi-millions for their Champions League and Premier League supply deals, while Mitter's contract for EFL competitions is worth just £800,000 a year. Pep Guardiola complained about the Mitter ball, which is widely considered the best around it's difficult to believe judging by their inept performance, but FA Quartet Greg Clark, Martin Glenn, Dan Ashworth and Rachel Brace were given coaching by a specialist company before their grilling by MPs last week. The FAA are not revealing who they used, and none of the leading communication companies in that field admit to being involved. FA chairman Greg Clark had specialist coaching before his grilling in front of MPs last week for jobs for the boys with gender diversity a priority for the FA, it is embarrassing that they have no women in senior management positions within their Wembley arm. Five departed for various reasons during ex Lady Julie Harrington's reign at Wembley in St George's Park. And Harrington herself has gone herself to be chief executive of British Cycling, where more heads have rolled. Meanwhile, the all-male heads of Wembley departments have just enjoyed a jolly boys outing to Silverstone for a strategy away day. The ECB's troubled commercial department, who are still searching for a domestic test match sponsor 10 months after Investec pulled out halfway through their 10-year deal, also have to deal with Royal London's sponsorship of the Otis and the County 50 Over Cup competition having expired with no renewal yet in place.